If you're a residential real estate agent earning $200,000 a year and you want to grow your passive income, this show's for you. Learn the secrets other agents use and hear from experts in our field in order to guide you along your journey to investing in assets like apartment communities so that you can turn your commissions into cash flow. I'm Randall DeCleared. Let's go, baby. All right, welcome back to Agents Building Cash Flow. I'm your host, Randall McCleared. Good to have you today. Um, I want to continue on sort of the the intro investment series that we were talking about last week, uh, where you go out and you fill out your PFS and your uh, cash flow statements, kind of figure out where you are, and then continue down the line and, and tell you about some of the investment strategies that you could use uh, based on your risk tolerance, your uh, time, it, whether you want to be active or passive, so that you can take that first step and go and get into a an investment of some sort for whatever suits your needs. So let's dive right in. I'm going to talk about high level, different types of strategies that uh, you can use and, and start to employ. So some of the things that you want to think about, you want to think about whether you want to be involved heavily, like you want, you have more time than money, perhaps. You want to know your risk tolerance. Again, you want to know uh, if you, again, want to be active or passive. And you want to know the return horizon. Like, when are you going to get your money back if you actually have to put some money into it? So, I'm working on a, a graphic for this that it'll be very easy to understand and see. But really, when you're looking at a, um, when you're looking at an investment or if you're looking at the place where you are, let's just assume that you are brand new, you're getting into real estate, uh, you're young, you're hungry, and you want to go and take something down. The first place a lot of people start in investing is going to be wholesaling. The reason that is, is it, it takes very little money. You can run around town, you can drive the city, so it's going to cost you some gas money. And you need a cell phone, so you can try to get some people on the phone, but you can go take pictures of houses, find the owner and try to get that property under contract. And then you just sell it the paper. You have a piece of paper that says, hey, I'm going to buy this thing. And so a ton of people now know about wholesaling and what it is. There's a lot of content out about wholesaling. And so, yeah, that's probably like the lowest barrier to entry, uh, highest competition, but lowest barrier to entry to, to get into some deals. Um, the way we had it set up and structured was that we had an acquisitions team we had lead managers who were taking calls inbound, outbound. Um, we had a disposition team. We had a transaction coordinator. We had a number of people on our team filling different roles. And I am happy to share that information with anybody who is actually looking at that as a strategy. So again, last week I talked about, hey, go write a review, uh, take a picture of it, put it on our Facebook page. I'll personally reach out to you and we can set up a time to go over some things. Um, what I also want to do is add in a document library. So if if you go in and we determine that wholesaling is the best strategy for you, I've got the documents that you need. I've, I've been, we've been doing it for a long time. Happy to share that information with anybody who is looking at that as a strategy to, to execute. So um, again, lowest barrier to entry, uh, lowest cost to you. That's be, that'd be wholesaling. And then uh, from there, you can move into like, uh, do you have access to capital or can you go partner with people? Uh, when I first got into it, uh, I had very little money. I think I remember I had $5,000. And I was at the point where I could either spend that money on marketing or I could go get a job. Literally, this is, I, I re recall this thought process in my head. It was probably 2009 or something like that. And, and I was all in. So I wanted to, I dropped the money, I spent it on marketing and uh, said, you know, if it doesn't work, I can always go get a job. But found a deal, made some money, um, ended up buying another house for $10,000 sight unseen and made 5,000 on that. So I got $15,000 back. So it's, it's the, commitment level that, that you can get into it and the uh, the cost. The point of that story is that from there, because I was able to do one or two deals, either wholesaling, I went and I, I started the, the rounds in San Antonio. I was going and talking to uh, private lenders. So you definitely want to start talking to anybody in your city who's either a hard money lender, a private lender. If you can get in touch with them, they usually come after you've done a few deals with hard money lenders and you just tell people what you're doing. Then you can go find some private money who may have better terms than like a hard money lender. So again, the point of all of that is if you have access to capital, then it opens the doors for a few other opportunities like rehabbing properties 
or doing a Burr model. Um, and so I'll I'll touch on those. Um, if you can, if you can go and uh, you have a lead source, maybe a wholesaler. You've graduated out of wholesaling, and now you're looking for deals yourself. Uh, so you have a wholesaler who sends you some deals, and you find one. You say, "This is great." You can put your numbers together. And again, if this is your strategy, happy to help you work through the the actual how tos on this. Then you put your numbers together. You can then go borrow the money right now. I think you're getting about eighty percent of the purchase price, and then maybe. 90% or 100% of the rehab just depends on who you're working with. It varies all over the country. So you need some capital to put up to the deal. So maybe you've wholesaled a few and now you're into the next phase and you want to rehab some things. So you have some capital, you put it into the deal, you borrow some money, you got a six month loan, you rehab the house, you turn around, you sell it. Okay. So that is obviously very active. You're going to be uh, full-time running a rehab unless you have a GC that that you know. Um, but I would recommend working diligently side by side with a GC anyway, especially on your first deal, um, so that you make sure that they're doing what they say they're going to do. You never write a check unless they have actually performed the work. A lot of things. So again, I can dive into all of that. There's a ton of content out already on on some of these strategies and not really the focus of what I'm personally working to. But again, I have a ton of paperwork, a ton of documentation, a ton of strategies that I have employed that if that's the the strategy that you're looking to to pursue, then I'm happy to share that information with you. Again, it's going to be on the website so you can go in and, and download that stuff. We're proud to be sponsored by Ridgeline Investment Group. Ridgeline has a track record of transacting more than 53 million in assets throughout Texas. Ridgeline is currently looking to acquire 100 to 200 unit Class B multifamily communities between five and 20 million in San Antonio, Temple, Waco, Tyler, and other Texas secondary markets. To learn more about Ridgeline Investment Group, visit www.ridgelineig.com. Okay. So that would be more on the high time. Uh, I would still consider that a low time horizon for your return. They're kind of like quick hits. You're trying to be in and out of a rehab and probably six months um, is a realistic number. There are some guys who can get them done in seven days, but then they list it, you know, and it takes a little bit of time to sell. Um, so it just depends on where you are. I would budget about six months to do a rehab con- uh, conservatively. And wholesale can be one day. You get under contract. You, if you have buyers that you know, you can turn around and flip that thing. So your time horizon on your return is is very small. Okay. So the other side of it, again, if you have some debt, you can put on a, a deal. You've talked to either private lender or or hard money. Um, you can do the Burr model and a Burr model is still time intensive for you. You have to either hire a contractor, or get people out there or have a partner who does all that stuff for you. Um, but once you have the property purchased, rehabbed, refinanced, this is why it takes so long because you're buying it. That takes some time. Rehabbing, it takes some time. The refinance is going to take 45 days. Um, and then you got to find a tenant. So like that whole process just takes a bit of time. Uh, but once it's up and running, and if you have a third party property manager, that can be relatively passive um, if you buy the right sort of houses. So again, that is money intense, time intense. Uh, the return profile and that is fairly, fairly long. It's it's not a get rich quick overnight scheme sort of deal. It's a it's a long-term play. You're hoping for appreciation over time of the asset and you are hoping for tenants that don't destroy property. Uh, so there's another strategy. Again, all, all these are on the more active side of investing. So another strategy is an owner finance model. I mentioned it briefly last week, but it is a, a way to get a very high return on invested dollars. Um, so there's multiple ways you can do it. If you have capital and you just want to pay cash for a, a piece of property, say you buy it for $100,000 uh, or you're in it total for $100,000, acquisition, rehab, whatever it is, you're in it for hundred, easy numbers. And then you turn around and you sell it for 200,000. It's unlikely that you're going to double your money right now, but uh, if you buy it right, right. So you get, you sell it for $200,000, you get a small down payment, 10% or so. So $20,000 down. 180 loan amount that you just created on $100,000 invested. So if you have a $180,000 note at call it 8% and you only put in $100,000, 
then that 8% is actually much higher because the 8% return is being paid on $180,000, not 8% on the 100,000 that you put in. So it's a great way for you to uh, increase the actual return on the dollars invested. Now there's other ways if you buy that property and you're in it for 100,000 and you had to get a, a loan on it from a private lender, as long as they're okay with it, you can go and wrap that loan and and do exactly what I said. So you may owe $100,000 at say 8%, but you're writing a note and you created a note for $180,000 at 8%. So your payments are going to be that delta between the two. And so uh, again, you if you get that big of a spread, then you're going to be just fine. And, but if your spread is, say you create a $120,000 note, and you're paying 8% out on maybe a 15-year term compared to what you created, which is a 30-year term with a $120,000 note, you're probably not going to make enough cash flow to make that deal make sense. Um, you'd have to get a really big down payment and then pay down some of the, the debt to the underlying lien holder. So again, ton of docs on that. Happy to share those with you if that is a strategy that you want to pursue. Uh, great strategy. I've done it a lot of times. Really, uh, it turns it turns a rental property into a much more passive investment. the The problem with it is that you don't get the same sort of tax write offs that you get if you just hold a rental property for an extended period of time. Uh, that depreciation goes away, and you're really. But at the same time, you're collecting interest payments. So, yeah, it's just a trade off. Again, how much how involved do you want to be? So still on the active side, another strategy is land flips, mobile home plays. We looked at for a while buying large tracts of land, cutting them up, putting mobile home part, mobile homes on them, and then selling those off, um, either owner finance or uh, just selling the dirt and having the mobile home guys. So there's a ton of different strategies. I don't want to get into all of them in detail, um, but it's really important, again, to go back to li- listen to last week's episode, understand where you are currently what you have the ability to do. If you have no cash and you have a lot of time, jump into wholesaling or try to be a bird dog for a wholesaler or for a flipper, right? And so all that means is you can go out and you, you're driving into the town, you're taking pictures of properties, you're saying this is thing needs to be fixed and rehabbed, you're sending it to a partner who has the ability to close on it, has the cash, has the wherewithal, and they'll give you a fee. My suggestion would be don't just do it for a fee, do it for a part of the deal so that you can get involved in the deal, you can understand the deal because ultimately that will progress your your learning curve. You'll get to your your next goal, I guess, faster if you are a part of a deal. And that goes for the same thing. If you are a bird dog for me going out and you found 50 to 100 unit complex, apartment complex, then be happy to bring you in on the deal as a partner and you could have a front row seat to how we acquire, how we fund, how we uh, operate everything on that deal. And it would put you in a much better position to learn faster than if you are simply saying, hey, here's a property, check it out, you should buy this, blah, blah, blah. All right, so that's my suggestion. So now if you've got more money than time, you're in a different scenario or you simply don't want to invest any time in a in an active role of of a real estate investment, then it's important, obviously, that you understand that. I'm sure that you do, and you can feel it. You know, you're like, I'm, I'm not going to be out swinging a hammer. I'm not going to be uh, driving for dollars. I'm not going to look for distressed properties and you know try to go into a bad part of town and do whatever. Right? You probably know that. So the strategies that you can employ. You can invest passively into a a fund or syndication. And again, there are a bunch of different funds. There's a bunch of different kinds of syndications. So you can get into real estate, you can get into venture capital, you can get into a hedge fund, you can invest a lot of different ways. And again, I want to bring on those types of operators, not just the real estate side that I focus on, so that you can see difference in the two, the nuances between uh, investing in a hedge fund, which is stock-based and investing in a a REIT and investing in like a venture capital firm. So again, that's a very passive way. You're going to put some dollars in, you have 50, 100,000, a million dollars, whatever the, the capital that you have to invest. If you like the strategy, you invest in the deal 
and and then you get distributions if it's paying distributions. So again, that's that's where you have to figure out on the passive side what you need as a return. If you are, I, I need a I need a monthly income, then you need to invest in something that is paying monthly distributions. And there are certain investments like venture capital investments that there is no money in that deal early on because they're investing all the money into these startup companies to try to figure out which one's going to go to the moon. So that's why I love real estate so much because it's an asset class that is providing a monthly distribution all the time, right? That is the idea. Um, And so that's why I, I like real estate because it's the cash flow. Not to say that it's, you shouldn't have part of your money in maybe a, a home run strategy that's going to hit the moon. Uh, and so you can throw some money into a venture capital uh, in, uh, fund as well. So uh, that's one. Another idea, if you are a uh, trading time for money or trading money for, for time, you want your time and you have money, um, you could buy automated businesses. So that's something that we looked at. It's just a, a another investment strategy to get you in the game. It's not real estate related necessarily. Could be if you're buying the real estate underneath, um, but it's just one of those types of strategies. Another one, you can buy a franchise and have a partner that runs them. So there's a ton of different ways that you can spend your money or invest your dollars without actually having to invest your uh, full time in building either a business or building some passive income coming in. So we could go deeper and deeper, but I think I'm going to leave it there for now. I just want to remind everybody, go to the website, go to agentsbuildingcashflow.com forward slash five steps and download the personal financial statement, download the uh, the cash flow statement. Very simple. Fill them out and get an idea of where you are and, and start playing with the numbers and figure out where you want to be and put those things together and, and then uh, reach out to me. Again, review the show, snap a picture, take it, put it on Facebook. I'll reach out to you actually. And we can set up a time that we can actually discuss where you are and what you're trying to do. Uh, very happy to to have those conversations to get you on your journey to, to finding a, an investment, finding a deal, finding something that works for you specifically so that you can get active in growing your passive income rather than just drive around, showing houses, uh, trading your time for dollars, right? That's, that's the key here. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, we'll build on this over time. There's going to be a lot of resources that I'm putting on to our site and specifically a little program that I'm putting out so that you can get more detailed information on some of these strategies if you are really looking for those strategies. So uh, thanks for joining me today. Hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks. Did you know that 80% of the agents we speak with got into real estate in order to gain passive income so they could obtain financial freedom and become work optional? If you want to stay up to date, The best way is to make sure you're subscribed. So if you haven't done that, go ahead and do it now. We'll catch you on the next episode.